there we are. And every time I forget to turn the sound up, important. Just gonna do my usual maintenance stuff and then we can get going. Maybe. <laughs> Not it. Do 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 do. Hi, Grampy. How are you? Trying to find the video. There it is. Hi, Celestial Rogue. <laughs> Love is a baked sweet potato. Love is a baked sweet potato. <laughs> I still can't believe I found that. That is just too much. Okay, I did get that. All right. And no, it's not made for kids. No, it's not Minecraft today. do playlists there we go all right now I'm not the most awake person <laughs> but I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow so I figured I probably wanted to get the live stream going today And I don't work till midnight tonight, so yay. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although next Wednesday, um, hubby is going to be making pumpkin pies for a family gathering so i'm thinking i'll probably live stream next wednesday because thursday will be out because that's thanksgiving and i'm not going to be home um and tuesday we're doing some massive mining in eve online so i won't be doing any streaming tuesday uh Hubby makes a really good pumpkin pie, though. He really does. He took his grandmother's recipe and modified it, and it's really incredible. Uh, including, um, he puts, uh, we handmade some different types of vanilla extract last year. So we have one that is vodka-based. We have another one that is rum-based, and he tried the rum uh, based vanilla in the uh, pie and it was pretty good and no the alcohol does not stay in the extract all the extracts are actually made that way so no oh, I'm not going to Roseville for that that's cute though it's looking at somebody's my little ponies Oh, they're cute. I want them, but I don't have 15 bucks today. All right, let's go put this up on Twitter. There we go. Uh, 15 is high. Hmm. Yeah, you're gonna check on them. 
Hate to go to Roseville for that sort of thing. Oh, crap. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no drunk pumpkin pies. No, um... Yeah, I work again tonight. Oh, the two ponies are still available. Um, I'm going to bug her later. I'm just fueled by Crystal Light with caffeine in it tonight. I don't want to have too many of those energy drinks in one week. Um, let's see, what else? Boy, I'm beat. But we're going to do this, darn it. So... First thing I have to do is coat the turtle with another layer. So we're going to use the art resin again. I have some smaller measuring cups. And so I'm planning on doing about, I think maybe, let's see. If I do one and a half teaspoons of each, uh, right where my thumb is on both of them. I wonder if that's going to be enough. I don't want to go a full ounce because that was way too much last time. So I'm going to turn the camera around. Crap. <laughs> Sorry about the camera quaking. Seems to happen all the time around here. There we go. Someday I will have professional equipment. Let's get that light out of the way. There. That's better. Okay. So I'm going to do... Get that light angled that way. I'm going to do um, 15 or one and a half teaspoons each. That should be just enough for what I want. And then maybe if I take the inner cap out, I might actually be able to pour this stuff. <clears throat> All right, and I gotta get this exact. Do, do, do. Okay, so that is the resin itself. Oh, I'm still at the stage with my hand where it hurts to turn caps on bottles. Yeah. <laughs> Did I get one and a half? I can't even tell. Uh, I got two. Two teaspoons. That should be good. I accidentally got more in there than I wanted. Okay, now for the hardener. If you don't get this just right, then it doesn't cure. I also have the resin that hardens under the UV light, and that one's kind of fun to play with. I'm sorry you can't see what I'm doing right at the moment. I'm just pouring stuff carefully. Last thing I want to do is screw up this painting after all this work. Do, 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 Okay, am I close here? Almost. Just a little bit more. Come on. I think I got it. One drip. Perfect. No, stop. Stop dripping. <laughs> You're done. I don't need more of you. <laughs> okay, good. Now I'll have to get a tray to mix this in. I'm going to have to splurge on getting medication cups. This 
just order big, get a huge batch of them. I'm feeling better. I still, my hand is still hurt, so I, and my other shoulder, so I did, um, almost 50 minutes of bicycling today. I did over 50 minutes yesterday. I'm just going to keep up with the bicycling for a while till things settle down, then I can use my glider again. But right now, I'll just do what I got to do. Okay, I'm pouring the two together in this tray. I hope, I hope to kiss a duck. Did I get this right? Probably could have just poured one into one cup and one in the other, but I'm going to wash these cups out so I can reuse them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you, Sadie. <laughs> yes, the artist lab. <laughs> We're playing with chemistry. <laughs> Science. It works, bitches. <laughs> You didn't hear me say that. Bad girl, bad girl. Okay. I think, and I don't want to mix those two cups together. All right. That looks like I got most of it. The paint's pretty dry, so I'm not worried. That's good enough. Stir stick. I may have screwed this up. I should have done this in the cup. In fact, it's possible I have messed this up. We'll see. I hope not. I'm going to be very angry with myself if I screwed this up. Um, well, <laughs> there was a time when I was little that my mom had this big party and somebody went and did this seriously gigantic turd in the toilet and it wouldn't go down. So my mom went outside and got a stick and was breaking up this giant turd and talking to it until she could get it to flush. <laughs> No joke. Now, they don't recommend hot water because that can actually wreck the seal on the toilet. So you might want to just use a plunger and just keep working at it and keep flushing in between until you can get it. Oh, I, you know, I'm not feeling the Christmas decor this year. I just... I'm not. Uh, I think the fact that I have some destructive cats who've destroyed several of my fairy statues, they've already broken like four gargoyles that hubby's got. Um, I'm just a little leery with four cats of, uh, of um, putting up Christmas decorations. <laughs> should work. I really hope this works. I said that last time and it worked. I suppose if it doesn't cure, I'll have to just put another layer over top of it and, you know, that'll cure it in there, but Oh, geez. Um there are kits at like Walmart. There's a uh, a long brush that's used just for unclogging toilets. You might want to go get that. I think they're like 12 bucks. The reason I know is because I have one of those toilets in this house that always has had trouble. Um, they've replaced a toilet twice, but there's some issue with the piping in the wall. And so 
if they really want to take care of it, they're eventually going to have to um, take apart the wall and replace all that piping. But at one point, we actually had a toilet that you'd flush it and it would volcano. It would spray upward about a foot from the toilet. It was gross. Yeah, there's a specific snake just for toilets. What do you do with the flapper? Is the flapper broke? Yeah, you need a toilet snake. And like I said, they're at Walmart. I think they're like 15 bucks. It's a lot cheaper than getting a plumber. Uh Okay, I'm trying to work some of the air bubbles out of this this time. You guys are probably going to be unhappy with me, but I might have to go with the hair dryer on this. Which won't take more than a minute or two. layer I want to be really thin. Stuff's supposed to be evenly flow, but it really doesn't. Sorry, I'm not looking at comments right at the moment. I gotta watch what I'm doing. Don't want this to be a thick layer. But even if it's a little rough, I got the detail on the turtle done. That was perfectly flat. So having a few places where the resin's a little more deep isn't going to be such a big deal. But art resin is supposed to kind of flow together and find its level. I just stuck my fingers in it. That's great. I have 45 minutes of working time on this. I should be able to get this.
Come on. Yeah, bugger. I don't want to put more on here. Looking under the light to see how much of coverage I've got. Actually looks pretty good. Oh, I missed a whole bunch right there. Oh, I didn't want to put more on here. Let's get a little bit more. And stuck my finger in it somewhere else. That's good. <laughs> I didn't realize yesterday I had a bunch of paint on my face when I got done with the live stream. <laughs> it was kind of funny. I wonder if I need to take my palette knife to this, but that's pretty dirty. Um, crap. What have I got? I almost need like, ooh. I just had an idea. Okay, you guys. Nobody tear apart the room while I'm gone. Yeah, you need to snake the toilet.
have like six large uh, scrapers for cast iron pans. I figured this would make a great spatula for spreading the resin around. So let's do that. This is gonna be a dedicated thing for the resin now. <laughs> Well, that works much nicer than a stick. Why didn't I think of this yesterday or the day before? You know, the other day when I did the first layer of resin. Would have made it so much easier. Some days I don't logic a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, sorry, camera quake. All right. Looking under the light again. Still got some streaks, but it's covered. So that's good. It's a thin layer enough that there's no bubbles left in it. So that's good. Hubby's in the other room swearing at his phone. I think that's going to be good enough. It'll even itself out the rest of the way. But I have a coat on everything, so that's what I needed. So we're going to set him aside. What is going on out there? Why are they messaging you? You're not on the clock. Lift is messaging hubby over and over and over again. All right, so I still have more resin in here. What else have I got that I can put resin on, guys? Um. Okay, okay. Can't waste that. Um, shoot, 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 shoot. Time to go into the molds. I might as well use them. Mm. Uh, those might be a little deeper than I expected. Well, this was completely unplanned. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to do this. Oh, my wrist hurts. Oh, that's big pieces. I don't know if I have enough resin for large pieces. Wrong. 
Oh, now that would be interesting. If it fails, I'll just wear it myself. Uh, that's going to fail. Uh, the problem is the rock is going to end up um, with the rounded surface will um, leak all over my table. And I don't have a setup right now to prevent that. <sighs> Disorganization. All right, what have I got for molds in here that I want to play with? Uh, I don't like that unicorn ring mold. I've got a unicorn ring mold. It's super duper thin. I just was not really happy with it. The ring came out really thin, breaks so easily. Do something kind of cute. What have I got here? Sorry, still hunting. I'm so organized today. <laughs> That's all my stickers. What's this mold? Boy, some of these molds really stink. Uh, heading down into my most used ones here. do something with that because here's a this was like my first test piece I ever did didn't turn out there actually was lace on the back of it and stuff and so it's just sitting in here just mentally just <laughs> not having a day today good grief I'm a major brain fart waiting to happen okay so how big um, well, this one I'm not going to be able to layer as neatly as I do with the UV resin because then I can work in layers and just do a little bit at a time, but I'm not going to have that kind of luck this time. All right. That's not going to work. My little pony stickers are too big. Oh, crap. All right, let's, um, a little bit of time to work yet. This probably is not going to turn out, <laughs> but I'm going to give it a shot. Let's go with the teardrop shaped one. Oops, sorry, off camera again. I just don't want to waste it. Oh, good grief. Well, at least with the resin, you can, um, can, um, oh, God, my English today is just sucky. Um, you can, uh, go and just take a nail file or a nail buffer. Tweezers. 
Not my good sharp ones, just medium ones. That should fit in there. If I open the container, I might get into it. I don't want to use my steampunk pieces. Let's go a little bit more kawaii on this one, I guess. I do dyes and stuff, but right now I don't want to mess with it. The dyes I have don't work very well. They tend to separate, which really ticked me off last time I used them. And they're alcohol-based. I don't know why they're separating out like they do. But... Oh, come on. Out of there. Hi, sweetie. What did Lyft want? They thought I left somebody's wallet in their car. Or in my car. Oh. And considering I had to run back to his house last night and drop off another thing he forgot in the car, I had to go look. Oh. But they sent me about 15 text messages about it in a period of two minutes. Oh, how nice. Yes. Didn't even give you time to go and look for it. Nope. Are you still on camera? Yeah. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing with this. Trying not to waste resin. I'm wasting supplies. Yay! Whoops. This thing has a little spout thing on it. Maybe if I was smart enough to use that. But no. Not smart enough. Come on. There's no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing at the moment. I'm just warning everybody. Digging through my random stuff here. These are all 3D. I don't know if I want to use them like that. I have a bunch of flat back uh, resin pieces here. And I'm not so sure I want to use those up. Those are for other projects. Oh, my little pieces here. That should be interesting. Well, this is going to be a <laughs> piece that is just like, what the heck was she thinking? Let's stick a little. Leaves in there. The bear is suffocating. 
There he goes. Poor bear. I'm drowning him. <laughs> I have no clue what I'm doing. Welcome to randomness. I'm doing a uh, a uh, slightly crazed, uh, nutty version of uh, Daphne Reloaded shaving her head. Girl. Look at that pretty hair. What else? What else? I want a couple more of these little pieces from this uh, thing of sequins I got. Yeah, I'm going to end up having to do a lot of filing with a nail buffer. <laughs> what I sometimes do, though, like at Pagan Pride, I had a bunch of test pieces that didn't quite work out. So I just put them on cords and sold them for three bucks each, and kids bought them. So, and I said they were failed resin experiments. <laughs> so this is probably going to end up on the failed resin experiment pile. But there, I used up quite a bit of it, so that's good. And we'll just let that sit. I could probably get a little bit more in there. Just having fun. Gotta have some fun. I'm going to be working on a My Little Pony... Uh, drawing tonight at work on break that might be a sequin I don't know I can't tell let's get that out of the way what have we got in here Add a little bit more. Let's get a little bit more color in there and on me. <laughs> I'm playing with crafters herpes. Huh, it'll end up cute. The little bear in there helps. Okay. Now that I'm covered in glitter. <laughs> I am very covered in glitter. Great. All right. I'm going to set that aside. See how that turns out. 
Used up the spare resin, so that's good. All done with that. All right. Hi, Blue. Oh, I haven't uh, done the photo of the Paris painting yet. Hi, Mandy. Have a rhyme or, oh, a rhyme or reason to anything I do? No, not really. Yeah, I just hope you don't break the seal on the toilet is the problem. Some more molds here. I'm just going to put my containers of molds right now. I have a lot of flat backs for making the appliques for uh, face painting too. And I have to do a lot more of those yet before Twin Cities Pagan Pride next year. So, um, like I have, uh, a book that I'm working on. Mandy actually face paints with me. Um, she comes to what events she can and helps helps me out. And we'll be starting our own face painting business at some point. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we do the face paint bling. Is something new we're just going to be starting. I mean, everybody else has been doing it, but like I'll take the flat back pieces and stick them in there and just make little weird things and these all have makeup adhesive already on the back so we just have to peel them off of here and put them on the kid so um i have to make a lot of those yet i don't have enough all right so um put that and that in my resin stuff that wasn't the plan today and the resin is next time I need to make sure I have gloves on because it's making my hands react yay all right so back to Santa Claus I shoved everything out in front of me now I have no room Was really a disorganized art stream today. <laughs> well, I mean, I wanted to do the one and a half teaspoons of resin. It probably was good that I mixed the two, two teaspoons each of the hardener and the, and the um, resin, but still, I just didn't want to waste that last extra bit. So now I have a pile of stuff in front of me. I can just sit there for now. As long as it's out of my way, that's all I care about. Welcome to Christina's disorganized art room today. <laughs> well, hopefully that toilet's gonna work out. Okay. Hope I can get that out of these cups. Get those cups cleaned. Be nice to be able to reuse them. Oh no, no, none of those wipes. They turn around and they say that the, you know the toilet wipes are flushable. None of them are. They're all made out of plastic, and it doesn't degrade. So um, yeah, the, a lot of people have those problems with them. All right, back to Mr. Claus. And I don't mean the cat. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, come on. Yeah, yeah, they are. There is no such thing as a flushable wipe because they are all all plastic. Um, even the ones that like Cottonelle puts out that says, you know, yeah, have have a take a moist wipe and have a nice clean bum and all of that, and they're perfectly flushable. They're not. The toilet paper is designed to degrade in the water, which is why it falls apart so easy. Those wipes don't have that ability. So I wouldn't wouldn't waste the time on them. You're better off if you're going to use wipes, just get baby wipes. They're cheaper. And um, there's a lot of hypoallergenic ones that are pretty cheap. And then just, um, you know, have them in a garbage can. Okay, now I do need to get back in under here. Oh, there I go again. Let's just shake everybody up. I get a better layer of paint on there. The trick is when you have areas that have a lot more depth, you want to have darker, sh really, you know, have a difference between your shadows. Like some of the other areas I have shadows are not as deep. But like right between his arm and the bag is an area of a lot of depth. So I want to have a darker shadow in there and a darker shadow on my thumb. I'm going to be so covered with messy stuff today. I swear. Yeah, yeah, don't. Yeah, those wipes are just absolutely worthless for using in the toilet, that is. I'm going to put several coats on him, and then he's got to get glazed when all the paint's dry. I'm just going to use an artist's glaze on him. Hoping to get into... Um, doing some of the My Little Ponies and stuff that I want to rework this year, too. But I got to get a lot of the stuff ready for craft sales and stuff. There's just so many things. All the things. All right. Get ready to dry brush that. I was this tired today. <sighs> but I can see where hubby comes from. All the darn pain from the injuries I just recently had. Um, 
would just tire me out. Okay, there's not as much wrinkles there. Sorry, concentrating. Um, go to Walmart and get the plump, the toilet snake. It's a long, it's like a three or five foot long uh, metal thing with a brush on it. And you're just going to have to try to get it in there and keep going in and out until the clog comes loose. And if that doesn't work, you are going to have to get a plumber. Okay, that actually worked out okay. Let's get this side of him now. Just working in layers. Of course, the skin and the beard and all the white is going to have to be the very last. Normally, it's easier to go light colors first, but because of where the detail is, I'm just going to have to do several layers of the white and stuff to cover up all the red. Hey, Helton, do you need help with your diorama? He wouldn't pay me. He'd expect me to pay him. <laughs> I'm thinking in a few years to do a My Little Pony diorama. That'd be kind of cool. Make it out of card, make the buildings out of cardboard and stuff. There's some makers on YouTube. If you look up uh, recycled cardboard Halloween house or something like that, you can see some people do amazing stuff with just the cardboard. But I have this gorgeous dollhouse right here. And um, I want to do stuff with that too. Make a good display out of that. You're probably going to have to just save save up to pay her back in the long run there. It happens. I wish they'd get rid of those, you know, get rid of the advertising saying they're flushable because they definitely are not.
Oh, come on, red paint coming out of there. Whoops. Well, <laughs> I got the red paint out of there. <laughs> it was a big squirt. Yeah, I thought of my father-in-law right away when I saw this Santa, because he does that Victorian Santa as his costume. It was just so cool. So when I saw this one, I just thought, yeah, that's, that's dad. <laughs> kind of having fun. I have not done one of these plaster figures in so long. It's just there. I really like him. He's cute. Oops, sorry, doing it again. I'm taking some of this dark brick red plum type color I got and I'm just doing the folds in the fabric. So it's shading, but it's a little lighter shading. And then I'm gonna go with the red over top. I'm getting the cherry red in there and it'll it'll work out in layers here but I'm going to have to do several layers just to get the colors blended in right. But I want that feeling of shadow in there and stuff, so that's why I'm blending the colors the way I am. But there's an intense dip right fold right in the fabric there, so a little darker there. Yeah, I'm going to do the same thing and probably just a real, real pale blue as well because sometimes, the I mean, they add blue dye to um, laundry bleaches because to things that are meant for just cleaning whites, they add a blue dye there because it actually makes the white look more intense. 
So that's what I'm going to do. Just a teeny hint of blue in the beard, I think. tricky part's going to be getting his face to try to get that to look decent. <laughs> I don't trust myself on things like that. My mom used to say that I wasn't an artist because I could never do people. My sister had a natural affinity for painting people and drawing people. Just she could, she always started with the eyes. She never would go and set up, you know, a entire uh, for, frame of the face or anything like that. And um, she quit drawing after like fourteen, and she was too young to get in the University of Minnesota art program even though they came out to see her stuff when she was 14. She couldn't get in until she was 16. And she just kind of stopped doing that. But she writes poetry and she prefers, prefers writing and doing that sort of thing as her form of art. And sometimes she does, you know, crafts and stuff. But I was a crazy art one. <laughs> My sister's really, really talented, though. Always has been. My sister's got more of the family features. She's thin. I'm the pudgy one. Blonde, tan, you know, not me. <laughs> I used to joke about how I, I was probably the mailman except, um, if you look at my cousin's daughter, of course, she's got her hair cut short now. But when she had her hair long, she looked exactly like me. It was like I had my doppelganger right in the family. Okay, I'm liking that. That's looking decent. Yeah, they are. Hi, Nebulana. Yeah, those things are expensive. I had a really cute set of uh, ceramic reindeer that my ex-husband somehow still managed to have. The lady had dry painted them, and they were just so adorable. I had the sleigh and everything. They were all handmade. She hand cast them too. And they were actually ceramic. They weren't this plaster. And it's like, I wish I still had those. I'd probably feel a little bit more Christmassy this year if I still had those.
And I mean, last year I wanted to get the lights up and everything, and this year I'm just not. It's early yet, though. I guess because it's kind of getting to where it's like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'll have more stuff to take down after Christmas. <laughs> And I don't feel like dealing with that. I just spend the time making the gifts and, you know, if the, my patients get stuff too. And um, just go that route. Invest my time in that, not putting up lights my father-in-law would be like what are you doing he does these giant now this is you know the man that plays santa he does these giant um christmas displays in in the yard and i have an old video on my channel here um of his christmas display one year and he um does all the wood cutouts um sets all the lights in them, uh, of course, checks them every year, animates a lot of the lights and stuff. So there's like kids tossing a ball back and forth and it's all done lit. Um, it just, you know, horse, it, Christmas horse carriages, just all sorts of things he does. And just really cool. And they are a Christian family, so Christmas is really huge. But then mom's also really into, like, Halloween decorations and stuff like that. Oops. Until I get my basement cleaned where I can set up my workspace for wood carving again, I can't make Dad his uh, Santa's walking stick. Or finish my walking stick. I have a really nice diamond willow one that I want to actually set a coyote skull on the top of it. I don't even have to do any wood carving on it because it's got all these twists and holes and knots and it's just a beautiful piece of wood. Um, hey, it, it probably, sh it might work. I was thinking that too. Yeah, that's, that's where I'm at, Nebulana. It's just like, I just get so tired by the time it's like, yeah, how much do I really want to do? And I think tonight after the live stream, I'm going to try and see if I can find my box and my cross stitch stuff. Cause there's a Christmas cross stitch that I want to do. And I started it years ago and then just packed it away because I had to work on the art business and just never got around to finishing it. And I really want to work on it. I did that apron and it's like, now I want to cross stitch. <laughs> Lots. Get it out of my system. That is looking really decent. The colors just worked out really nice. So, step back for a minute. Yeah, 
Uh, baking soda and hot water and vinegar. Do not mix anything with ammonia and bleach in it, though. Because you don't want to create chlorine gas and kill yourself. <laughs> but yeah, the vinegar and the baking soda and hot water, you know, if that should help with it too. I have um, linen for making my own chemise for uh, my Renaissance costume. I never got to doing that because... It was just such a big task to try and sew the darn thing. And I don't know how to do a sewing machine, so hubby's going to show me with that. So I can do some sewing and, and modify some clothes. You know, take some of the ones that I really like and shrink them down. And um, otherwise take some crappier ones from the thrift store and add laces and modify them and just make some funky bohemian stuff because that's the style I like to wear. And there's like um, all these companies that like advertise on Facebook and stuff, you know, and have fairy, fairy clothing designs and stuff, and they're all fake companies. And so what they do is they'll take your money and then they go and they say that, you know, that they're... Uh, um, based out of Germany and all of this, and it turns out, no, that everything is dropped, shipped from China. And um, the stuff, if they send you anything at all, is really crappy, and there's no way to get your money back. I It is, so those companies are terrible. And But there's some styles of the clothes that they have that I'd really, really love to be able to wear. I was like, well, I might have to just save myself a lot of money and make them myself. And, you know, if I have extra ones that I sell at events, then so be it, you know. Do a little bit more like homesteading. Hey, you are still probably going to have to make a trip to Walmart. I don't think the vinegar is going to work by itself, not to dissolve the clog. Oops. This is a really nice sculpture. They put a lot of details in here. Makes it a little harder to paint, but... The fact that they've got, you know, depth to the chimney. You find these cheap sculptures, they usually don't. You know. Whoops. Doggone it, I do that every single time. <laughs> red in there to make it look like his pants are in there. He's getting into or out of the chimney, one or the other. All right. Makes it a little challenging to get in there and paint it, though.
All right. <laughs> Boots. Well, I probably could work on the chimney next. I don't know. Probably, then I can do the... Ah, doggone it. Stop it. Now, if I do the... What happened here? If I do the chimney next, then... Um, then I should be able to... Um, do the boots after that. I want to look up something here. Uh, okay, I'm going to uh, see if this comes through here. Somebody on YouTube that's got it. Hi, my name is Dave Henry with Wilbur Henry Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. Our phone number is 717-755-5461. Our website address is wilburhenry.com. Here are some things you can try to do on a clogged toilet. Uh, the three most common uh, things that clog toilets is a way too much toilet paper. The flexible wipes, I know they say flexible on them. I get a lot of clogged sewers with these flexible wipes. They do not break up. They catch on the pipe and they will stop broken your sewer line sooner or later. Uh, some of the things you can do is once the clog occurs, just let it sit for a couple of hours, you know, three, four hours. Try to let it soften up because a lot of my oil customers that are on medication have harder stools uh, and the toilet paper will just soften it up, help to break it up. You can try a metal coat hanger. What I'll do is cut a coat hanger and try to bend it as long as I can and stick it up as far as I can to help break it up. The other thing you can do is try flushing the toilet when it's clogged. The more water in the bowl, the more head pressure is on the clog and might help it push it out through. Uh, so what you want to do is flush the toilet. If the water comes up too high, you push the flapper back down as fast as you can and that will stop the flush by pushing the flapper back down. Uh, the other thing you can do is just try a regular plunger or go to any uh, hardware store and try a claw stalker. Uh, that's what we carry on. There our you go. You need an auger, and they do There's sell those at Walmart. People, it's not flushing properly, especially people on well systems with the calcium deposits. You have jets going the whole way around your toilet up here in the rim. I use a little tiny Allen wrench key. Go up inside your holes, just wiggle around to open them up, and your main jet here at the bottom. Not all toilets have a main jet at the bottom. It all depends on the design of the toilet and the way it flushes. Uh, but your main jet at the bottom, if you have one, has to be open, and all your jets going around up here at the uh, brim of the bowl have to be open to stop the flushing. If it's not flushing correctly, it could be the fact that the jets are just clogged up. And then there are some three simple tips to try to help open your toilet or make it flush a little better. Thank you. Yeah, so he's pretty much, I put the link to that video. Oh, you're kidding, she is? Yikes. Anyway, that link to the video I put there is uh, solutions for um, clogged toilets. And he did talk about the flushable wipes. Um, so, yeah, the wire, straightening out a wire coat hanger will help. Um, and if not, uh, you may have to go to Walmart and get a toilet auger. And that's what it's called. It's not the snake. It's a toilet auger and it's just for toilets. And it's got a long brush on it. It's got, it's like three feet long or a little bit longer. And, um, you can get it down into the toilet. I can't believe Daphne's deleting her channel. That's not right. Did she say what platform she's going to? Oops.
Okay. I had to go with white first because most of the time bricks will have white mortar in between. So we're going to try to go somewhat realistic and get a slate gray too. I think Daphne's jumping ship a little early, but the whole thing that, you know, Google's blocking talks about flat earth and all of that, and Daphne believes in that, that's one of her big driving forces, and you know, it is what it is. I think deleting her YouTube channel over, it's kind of silly, but... Mortar's pale gray, Yeah. depending on how dirty it is. And this is a chimney, so I'm gonna have some soot going, you know, down here too, but I'm just gonna mix up my pale gray here. That might be a little too pale. Let's throw some black in here. Yeah, it, it, she's got some ideas that are a little bit wonky. Um, she actually is known for um, one of the things that she did a long time ago on YouTube is she ate pages out of Scientific American magazine and tried to say that, um, you know, scientists are just making up words to confuse people and stuff like that. So she's... Daphne's got some ideas that are really out there. <laughs> but it it's upset her that they can't talk about flat earth as easily anymore and stuff like that because Google kind of said enough is enough. Which I honestly don't agree with because, I mean, anti-flat earth channels are still out there. I mean, I've done stuff on it. And... You know, it's, well, YouTube doesn't have to abide by free speech because it's a private company. It's a private platform. I still think that they've kind of just one-sided the conversation a little bit. And if you go and respond to a flat earth video, you can be accused of bullying. And it's like, YouTube can't even get their own rules straightened up. You know, we should be able to criticize people's ideas easily. You know, not necessarily making fun of them, but, you know, I mean, we should be able to talk about why things like these conspiracy theories are wrong, why um, random weird diets are unhealthy, um you know, why f flat earth is <laughs> bunk, um, you know, stuff like that. We should be able to freely talk about it, but we also should be able to see that those ideas are out there in the first place. It keeps the conversation going. As long as nobody's getting hurt by it and nothing illegal is being promoted, um, what is the harm in it? I mean, really, although there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of kids that don't understand that hamburger comes from cows um, or they did a survey and there's like 20% of the population or something thinks that uh, chocolate milk comes from brown cows and they're dead serious. I mean, so a lot of these ideas need to be discussed and, you know, be out there, but and I think YouTube's jumped the gun way too many times. Oh yeah. I I <laughs> yeah, she she does not look 35.
I think she's going to find that moving platforms. She's going to end up losing a lot of her fan base. I don't know if that is actually a wise decision on her part. Keep her skincare stuff up. Keep her nutrition stuff up. You know, that stuff is very popular. And it's brought her a lot of business, too. VD just uploaded right now. Uh, oh, vegan deterioration. Okay, I had to think a minute. I'm like, VD, what? <laughs> I really am more tired than I sound. <laughs> My nurse brain was going into the other meaning for VD. <laughs> we don't want to go there. No. Ew. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know about the dumpster diving thing. It's um that's just gross. <laughs> The only thing that I'm kind of concerned about is a lot of, um, you know, the dumpster diving is a huge thing. And there's a lot of people that turn around and, like, if you get these mystery boxes on eBay and stuff, uh, and it's, like, makeup mystery boxes and, and things, they've gone through and... Um, They've gotten them that they're selling in the mystery boxes from dumpster diving. And I just, that kind of cringes me a little bit. <laughs> and it's not that I haven't done it. When I lived at my apartment, I got some beautiful pieces of furniture and stuff. And I still, I still, um, like one guy, uh, one of the neighbors had set out a whole bunch of bricks from his patio. He pulled up and they were all by the trash. I grabbed them all, you know. I'm actually going to put a couple of boxes up, I think, um, on eBay, some mystery boxes before Christmas. But they're going to have like specific themes, um, artist box of unicorns and stuff like that. And my plan is to have some fun things in there and, and some handmade things in there and, um, you know, have it that, yeah, these things are worth it guaranteed in the box worth a certain amount, but that's because that certain amount is what we normally would sell at for each item. So, um, you know, there may be jewelry, there may be things like that might do unicorn themes, stuff like that, but I have to get a lot more stock built up. So I might not get it this year. It's getting a little late in the year, but I want to do artists, artists, mystery boxes where, you know, I just surprise you guys, you know, I haven't watched Graveyard Graveyard Girl in years. Because that one is, there's been a lot of scuttlebutt around her over the years, I guess. But yeah, Amber Lynn got really scammed with that one mystery box she did. God, that was kind of funny. They sent her a whole bunch of crap. <laughs> I was like, oh my word. That was really kind of hilarious. But she she makes so much money, she doesn't care, you know.
Uh, 2005, I have no idea. I didn't do... Hi, Julie. Oh, cool. Amber Lynn has a nice bod. Not at 600 pounds, Sadie. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad. No, um, we used to, on a horse farm, we used to have AKC uh, uh, hunting dog trials. That was always fun. I love that. I love dogs. I miss having dogs, but, you know, life, life does what life does. End up going different ways. I miss having horses, too. Dark in there. Okay. <laughs> Nerd dogs. Oh, that would be so fun, Julie. You should. Dogs are so much fun. I'm going to just throw a few bits of white in here. Just to change the color around a little bit. Boy, he's heavy. <laughs> Wait, it's Santa. He's supposed to be heavy. Yeah, Santa probably does. <laughs> Not the real Santa, my father-in-law, but the Santa probably does. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. We we were in kind of this crappy apartment and had had three days to move out of this house or into this house. Um, the guy hadn't even cleaned the house up. But all of a sudden it's open, so we go and we get everything packed within a few days and just get all of it moved. And, of course, it was the end of November, and my father-in-law always grows his beard out, and he's got this perfect white beard. I mean, absolutely white. And he is a little heavier and so he showed up with his red beret on, his white beard. He had a red sweater on. And I think a lot of it's just from aging, Sadie. <laughs> they have the extra belly fat. I got a lot of it, too, though. Why? That's weird. And... 
anyway, um, he was helping us load stuff into this, uh, moving truck trailer. And, um, we we're going back and forth with the boxes and he looked, even with just a red beret on, he looked like Santa. I mean, he always looks like Santa and he drives school bus now after he retired. And so he always looks like Santa when he's driving the school bus too. So here he is helping us load stuff. And this woman comes with her kid to go walk up the steps and go into the apartment building. And, um, Uh, some of it is from aging, changes in hormones and stuff. But anyway, he comes out with these boxes and loads them in. And this little kid was probably about five, maybe six. And mom is hanging on to the kid's hand and trying to pull the kid into the apartment. And the kid keeps craned the neck around trying to look at my father-in-law. And before they get in the building, the little kid says, Mommy, why is Santa helping them move? And Mom turned around and she said, Well, sometimes when people are really, really nice and they need help, Santa comes to help them. She did, Mom didn't, this mom did not miss a beat. It was so cute. Oh, yeah. It, it, some of it, a lot of it is aging. The hormones change. Um, and the mobility changes, too. I mean, there's, you know, if they start having more issues with joints and arthritis and stuff, moving around is a lot slower. And, you know, the less calories you burn, the less calories you should be eating, but trying to find that cutoff, you know. And the changes, men still produce testosterone and still can have children when they're in their 70s and 80s even. But, you know, the rest of their body has changed with it and they're still producing these hormones and testosterone is a growth hormone. So um, they'll gain weight from it if they're not working out. Well, it's not necessarily an excuse, but some people can't help it. Again, there's that fine line is sometimes it's diet, sometimes it's disease processes that are causing the weight gain. Like um, if you have somebody who has, like I know one friend that has relapsing remitting MS and the MS set her in a wheelchair for probably about 10 years and she gained a lot of weight doing that. And then her remission finally kicked in where she could move around again. As soon as she was able to be up and walking, um, she's lost 100 pounds. Yeah, and stress messes up your hormones too. And then if you have like thyroid uh, inactivity, like my thyroid doesn't function, so I have a harder time losing weight. Uh, women will have, um, some of them will have polycystic ovarian disease. I had that. That will help you have trouble losing weight. It's often easier to gain. Um, medications will cause you to gain weight. I mean, there's all sorts of factors when it comes to a person that's older. Oh, yeah, I'm... I'm on a lot of levothyrox and I'm on 200 micrograms a day. And if I miss one day, I really feel it. I mean, I'm just trashed after one day of missing a pill. Um, it's helped me keep my weight down. Um, my uterus was over a pound because of the cysts and my ovaries were really huge too. So, um, I had lost, I think I pretty much had permanently lost like three pounds after the surgery because they took everything out, but I had cysts all over. It was bad.
Yeah, insulin is a growth hormone too. So if you have somebody that's got any diabetes and they're taking insulin, they can gain weight off of the insulin. Um, and um, like especially if a pregnant woman has gestational diabetes where she's, you know, diabetic while she's carrying the baby um, and they put her on insulin, that insulin will help the baby grow uh, now, I wasn't on insulin during my second pregnancy, and of course, my ex-husband was six foot two, but I mean, my daughter was nine pounds, six ounces at birth. I'm only five foot tall, and my son was 10 pounds, six ounces at birth. So, you know, and I was, I was on diet controlled with my son. I was undiagnosed when I was pregnant with my daughter, and she was the first one. But I'm just glad I didn't have insulin to take because I would have ended up with a 12-pound kid, <laughs> you know. Oh, yeah, I wonder sometimes how high up I'm going to end up going on the thyroxin. Pretty sure it's going to be a lot. Oh, MS is terrible. Oh, that I didn't know, Rogue, that you're legally blind. Yeah, my husband's lost a lot of weight because of the stage of MS where he's at where it's causing him to not want to eat. And he has to force himself to eat just to be able to keep going. So he doesn't take in a lot of calories at all. Um, the anemia is because of our natural cycle with our body. I mean... We, when we shed the uterine lining, we're kicking out a lot of nutrients and stuff every single month and bleeding and stuff. And so that wears us down. That's, that's the main thing on the anemia. The thyroid, I don't know. I don't know if that's always been a common cause or if that is an effect of our, you know, our food production and the way they make the food, all the grains, all the sugars, all the chemicals, you know, that they use for preserving uh, frozen foods and stuff like that. Um, we've seemed to have a lot of weight gain since the 50s and since the 40s when they started really going into um, doing all these frozen convenience foods. So I think that is a major problem right there. Oh, that's kind of, well, you know, if it's, if your photography has a different look and there's people wanting it and you're doing something that's artistic there, then while well, the blind in one eye is a pain in the ass, <laughs> you're, you're making, making it work, you know. Yeah, and, and, you know, they they kind of need to be, especially when your thyroid is that far down, too, is you don't always keep the the proper stores of things like the iron and the, and the B and everything that you really need and the vitamin D and stuff. So, but if you're that severely anemic, too, they want to make sure it isn't a gastro bleed. Just keep an eye on your, your poo, too. If there's anything that looks like coffee grounds in it, then you need to go in because you have active bleeding at that point. Oh, yeah, I bet with the, the odd depth perception from only having one eye, that would be, but... Uh, yeah, my father was four foot eleven, I think, or five foot. He was really short, and a lot of my father's side of the family was short. Now my uncle Manfred is six two or six three. My mother is only five foot three. My grandmother was not very tall, 
Um, my sister is, I think, like five foot four. My daughter's only five foot four. My son is almost six foot four. Um, yeah, so it's just a matter of genetics. I can't, <laughs> Julie, you're not missing anything on 3D movies. I can't handle them at all. I got so sick, motion sick during Avatar that I won't do 3D movies anymore. I almost puked in the theater. Yeah, yeah, but I'm, my father's side of the family is really short. A lot of them are, so I just inherited the short gene. My son is a beanpole, which is why he was such a big baby when he was born, too. He's a tall drink of water, and his girlfriend's tall, too. So, you know, they ever get married and have kids, I think the kids are going to be taller. Unless um, unless there's a fluke and she she goes and throws my jeans and they end up with a little little kid, you know. <laughs> Because it used to be that, you know, my mom always taught me when we were breeding horses and stuff that when the way genetics will sometimes work is that the mare, the female, will throw the traits of the stud's mother. So um, when you breed the mare to the stallion, his mother, her traits are going to come through a lot on the baby. And my grandmother was really, really short. She was just a tiny, tiny, tiny thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my um, ex-brother-in-law at 13 was like five foot eight, I think. Just really tall. <laughs> oh, I'm proud of my height though or lack thereof I don't mind my height ow I moved wrong sorry stretched and got my shoulder to gripe I think I'm mentally done painting here <laughs> I'm going to switch the camera back over just talk to you guys for a little while ow I still, I'm not so sure I didn't fracture something in my hand. Oh, yeah, I, you know, I'm fairly, it depends on what I'm wearing. I'll be body positive. And like yesterday, I wasn't at all because I kind of just, in one day, just sleeping, I lost three pounds. So I was so bloated yesterday that I felt just like I wanted to crawl under a rock and hide. And it's better today, but, you know, hard to be potty positive when you don't feel very good. And, um, you know, some days are better than others. And I have some really nice clothes. So, you know, if I get dressed up, you know, then it's fine. But um, I don't, I don't know. I'll be a little happier. I know I'm never going to get my high school body back, especially since I'm getting older. But, you know, as I get some more weight off, I'll be a bit happier. It'd be nice to be able to wear cuter clothes that I like. Although, I just got a blouse from Rose Gal that I can't wait to wear. It's really cute, and it's just an XL, and it's like, yay! <laughs> But if I look in the mirror or look at photos of myself, I look really fat. And I don't know if that is just my perception of myself or if that actually the, is the way it is. And it might be because my height that it makes me look wider, even though I'm, you know, I'm uh, a lot of people say I don't look like I'm over 200 pounds, but I see it. And so, you know, it's, I don't know when I'll be satisfied. <laughs> my husband, um, 
Now he's my second husband and he is he's told me he's five foot eight or five foot nine, I think. I always thought he was over that, but no. <laughs> yeah, my ex husband, like I said, he was six foot two. If you're a teenager, you're you're not done growing. You've still got some time to grow. I think it's like um actually mid twenties and you'll still have um have uh some growth going on t until your mid twenties. Boys tend to get a little bit taller anyway, you know, testosterone is a growth hormone. Yeah, I think my mom said that my grandfather was, I think he was like six foot or six foot one. I never got to meet him because he was killed um, by uh, the Third Reich. He was an engineer for the Third Reich and he got executed. So I never got to meet my grandfather. And my mom was like only five or six at the time. Uh, the growth plates uh, is probably, depending on your nu nutrition that you're taking in and stuff, uh, probably about, um, I don't know, like 18. I was small and petite for a while, but, pardon me, my apologies. Let's look this up for sure here. Well, it says here, uh, medical news today, that uh, most boys will stop growing taller by age 16 and usually have developed fully by 18. But my son, even up to 20, had gotten a little taller too. So I still think nutrition has a lot to do with that. Yeah, we do. Oh, yeah. Well, it's kind of funny. Um, my mom used to, I, I have this regular joke my, where my mom used to say that she always wanted her horses to have butts like a cook and heads like a lady, but d didn't think she wanted her daughter to look <laughs> that way. <laughs> I used to be, I mean, in high school, I was just really, really tiny, but, you know, I... You work every muscle in the body when you're riding a horse, especially if you're training for competition riding. There's very few fat competition riders out there because trying to maintain the balance, you've got the animal moving underneath of you and you're trying to keep your balance in the saddle and everything, and it tends to work every single muscle group. Um, and so I was doing that six to eight hours a day, and then I'd be shoveling manure and hauling hay bales and doing all of that stuff. So, I mean, I constantly worked. And so, yeah, my weight gain got to where in college it was just I was so busy, and I got to eat what I wanted because I could afford to buy my own food. I didn't have anybody withholding it from me. And... um you know, and it, I also had the attitude, I think, in my 20s where it's like, you know, I look cute. I'm not going to gain weight. Oh, yeah, I gained weight. And then they figure um, that my thyroid probably shut off when I was like 22. It quit. You know, I was drinking a lot of soy milk and stuff. The craze back then was that soy was good for you to have as a complete replacement for dairy and all of this. And I was trying to keep my weight down, and it was after that that my thyroid quit, and I didn't get treatment for it until after my kids were born because I had, um, it just never occurred to me to, to look for it. But at one point, I went to, 
not my regular doctor because by that point I was moved away. I went to a different doctor and I said something's really off with my thyroid because I'm not eating a lot and I'm gaining weight. And they just disregarded it. Well, when I moved back to Minneapolis um, during my divorce, I went to my old doctor. I was able to get back in with him. And um, I said, you know, I'm keeping track of my food and I'm eating 500 calories a day right now and I'm still gaining weight. What the heck is going on? And they did blood tests and I had like zero thyroid function at all. So on medication immediately, you know, I wish I would have pushed, you know, even 10 years prior, I could have probably stopped this and I wouldn't be the weight I am now. But some of it was just rebelling and getting getting tired of it. And when I was married to my ex, um, it was pretty abusive relationship. And I think I also used my weight gain as a way to keep him away from me physically. And um, so I didn't care then either. And it was just, I just had given up. And... I've recognized that in myself in this last two months that I've gotten to where I feel like I've given up again. And so now it's trying to combat that. And, you know, it's just when everything gets to you and you just get this point of depression in you and you feel like you're struggling for nothing. And that's what I've been feeling like. And it's... You know, like I said, I'm better today. It comes and it goes. I think the more I'm bicycling and stuff, and I have a bike in the garage now that I'm going to rebuild, um, that somebody had set aside, the tires are still good and everything. Needs a little cleanup, needs a little work. I'm planning on riding it this coming year. And it doesn't have the handlebars down, so I'm going to be able to just sit up and ride it a little better. And that'll make me feel better. Because I love bicycle riding, but I haven't been able to do it for years. So we'll see where that takes me. But I have a good exercise bike. I have this Gazelle Freestyle next to me, and I want to get to using that again once this clears up better. Right now, still not. And my shoulder's way too touchy for me to be using that yet. So it's probably going to be another week, and then I can use that thing. You go against your weight, and it helped me rehabilitate this shoulder, so I'm hoping to be able to use um, the muscle work that it creates with my own weight to get this the strength back in this shoulder and then I can start working on the full weight loss again too at the same time because that thing you're working a sweat on this thing it's an elliptical basically it's a glider but it acts like an elliptical and it really burns the calories <laughs> oh my gosh I can't imagine uh, where did you move from celestial Oh, jeez. Yikes. Oh, I'm sorry, Julie. E That's bad. Oh, wow. Yeah, my whole family's from Germany. Oh, trust me, I... I'm more of a curve than I am curvy. <laughs> Although the chest kind of belays that. There's quite a bit here. <laughs> oh, that is just rough, though. Dang. Okay, Tasmania is cool. Yeah, I had um, at one time where I thought I was pregnant and I went and this was this was with an ex-boyfriend that I didn't want to do anything and um, he kind of forced me. Well, he did. <laughs> and so I thought I was pregnant and I was still living at home with my parents and I you know, was always threatened that if I was going to get pregnant, I'd be disowned and out on my ear and everything. 
Well, I was also training for bicycle tours and riding the MS-150 and stuff. So I got to the point where I was bicycling 50 to 75 miles a day. And I was barely eating and pretty much forced myself to miscarry. So honestly, that is why I am pro-choice. Because there are women who are not in a state to have children up here and I mean for a lot of the things that I went through and stuff um, and growing up uh, you know I, I turned out I'm happy with the person I've become and stuff but it's like I was constantly told that I should have been aborted and stuff like that and so I mean there's ups and downs on both issues but yeah I had done that to myself and so it wasn't a matter of a stillbirth or anything like that. I I didn't want to kill myself. I wanted to punish myself. It was two different things. Oh, yeah, I did. Oh, your other comment about your dad's height? That he's a late bloomer? You, know, you might be a late bloomer too, you know. <laughs> I don't have two heads. <laughs> and I suppose, though, I'm going to have to, I got to get some supper in me before I go to work so I'm not thinking about food all night long and driving myself insane. Because I really, I had some Cheetos this morning and that was about it. My stomach was so upset I couldn't handle anything else. So I didn't even have a supper, so I need to eat something. You might get there though. If your if your dad was a late bloomer, you might get there. I wouldn't take that out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, I think these cups are kind of shot. I don't know if I'm gonna get that out of there or not. Sorry, distracted myself. <laughs> All right, but I'm going to have to call it, you guys, because I need to take care of myself before, before I have to go do my night shift. So thank you all for popping in. Oh, just, you know, work on your nu nutrition. Work on, you know, making sure that you do eat well enough. Um you know, just having the clean clean foods as much as possible. You know, try to avoid the heavily processed uh, long-term storage stuff like, you know, TV dinners and things like that. Just try and eat clean and keep your nutrition well-rounded. And um, you should be able to get, get a good amount of growth in and keep your weight at a nice level. And still, you know, work out or exercise or whatever you do. So that you keep your weight balanced and that's basically where you want to be right now is just balanced don't worry about over muscling or anything like that or trying to be somebody you're not just work on your health that's all you can do <laughs> short from holding up the world okay julie have a good night have fun with all the puppies <laughs> all right take care everybody i gotta get going so and, you know, like I said, Sadie, go get that auger and watch that video I had linked. I have to, though, Sadie. I got to get ready for work. I can't help it. I have to eat something because I am diabetic. And if I pass out at work, it's going to be a really bad time. So, all right. I'll talk to you later. Love you all. Blessed be, everybody. Have a great night.